Okay, I finally have a project on the 1979 DT-175 Yamaha Enduro. Let's see. It's in pretty good shape, but we're going to change the main jet today because I'm noticing lack of power in the um, kind of last uh, quarter of the throttle. Um, so I'm going to take the carburetor out, it's a Makuni VM24SS, and these are JIS screws, which means you need a JIS screwdriver or bit, which is what this is. Yes, you can get away with not using those, but it's best to, best to go ahead and get one, um, if, especially if you're going to be working on it a lot. So. Well, first let's go ahead and remove the fuel line here. Take that off. I got this T handle with five bits, one of the smallest and two of the medium and large. I think it was like twenty bucks on Amazon, it's not too bad. Was really loose. I've, I've had weird fitment issues with this boot, um, so I don't know. I think I cranked it down too hard in the in the wrong spot, and now it's it's kind of off. But anyway, what you got to do? Slide the whole thing back, and you can rotate. The back one. Oh, we need to loosen that third connector right there. Here, so you can take the side panel off there. And oh yeah, we got to move the oil reservoir. Oh, you know what? While we're doing this, let's fill it up. Oh, well, actually, let's do it after. But I'll put the two-stroke. This is what I've been using, but um, yeah, this is pretty nice. So you can use just pump gas with it. Mine has a wing nut here. I don't know if that's standard or not, but we should be able to get away with just swinging this. There's a hinge right here, um, but a lot of the time, if you're working on other things it's best just to go ahead and remove it back here too but that means you also need to take out this tube which actually feeds from the bottom of the reservoir this tube right here see that goes in right there so you have to remove that if you're going to swing it out which is kind of a not great design but we should be able to kind of sneak this past right here for that top top clip back there is hard to see. So sorry if you can't see it. Okay, that should be listening. Okay. So now you should be able to see how I'm moving the whole thing back. If you look at this gap right here, it's much bigger. It should go this way forward towards the front of the bike. But now we can rotate it enough to undo the throttle. Cable, all that good stuff. Pull this this 
it out and just let it rest to the side over here. You don't want to like bend it too far, but just out of the way. Move that back out of the way, kind of. Okay, so now I think the rest are just. Oh no, we do have to. We have to take off the auto lube on the other side. Let's do that. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the bike. Apologize for the dirtiness, but we do need to remove this tube right here. This actually, so this is the supply, this black one is the supply from the auto lube on the other side of the bike. That goes into here, that goes into the auto lube is right behind here. And I'll make a video about setting that too, it's pretty easy. Um, oops. So basically it goes down in there and then the pump feeds the oil back through here, right up to the carburetor where it mixes with the fuel air mixture and goes straight into the engine there. It's a pretty cool system. I, I dig it. Um, so let's get that out of there. So I generally just kind of use a flathead to move it a little bit if possible. Whoops. Doesn't look like that's going to work though. This hose is actually technically just a little bit small, so I'll show you how to bleed this too now that we're uh, Make sure there's oil flowing through there. When we run it, we'll, uh, we can see it. We'll bleed it. Okay. Okay, so I think we got everything disconnected that we need to. So now, we should be able to kind of push it back. And you want to rotate this rear boot, but we actually need to loosen that upper clamp somewhere. It's still still really in there. Hmm. I really don't want to have to take this off, but I guess we will. So these are the large size JIS in the back. Yeah, good try, Honda. With I mean Yamaha with the uh, the hinge there, but he didn't quite design it the right way. Okay, so now you can see that upper one there. So if I keep bumping the camera. As loose as I can get it. I'm going to rotate the back boot towards you this way. That gives it a little bit extra room, just enough.
I'm going to take the float bowl out. This is when you really want the JIS because you really want these to be tight. See the little indentation, the dot on the screw head makes it a JIS. Pretty dang clean in there. We got it pretty clean when we first got it running, so there shouldn't be much gunk in there. Pretty good in here, too. This bed boy right there, that's your main jet. That's what we're going to change. Okay, so this bigger one is an 8 millimeter. Smaller one is a 6 millimeter. We definitely want to hold this 8 millimeter with the main jet right there. This one should be a 1. 40 from the factory the um, marking is really small on the face of this so I'm not going to be able to focus on that but it says it right on the front there I'm going to try a 150 go up two sizes there's also a 145 in the middle I feel like I will be able to feel the difference and I'd rather go bigger to start and then um, you know I can always go get a 145 as well so let's see does it go on this way yep just it'll only go on one way it won't go on this way we'll figure out the little swoop right there just goes right back on Getting it back in there is never super fun, but um, typically you want to, same way you kind of got it out, you move it backward towards the rear of the bike and then out towards you. We're going to go in at an angle and then swoop it forward like that. Easier said than done, but basically just keep fooling around until you get it. Just root your vacuum hoses or whatever these are kind of over that direction. We'll figure them out from the other side. Make sure you're putting it in the right way too. It really suck to get it in backwards and then you gotta do all your work again. Let's try to rotate. get it over the lip in the back there and then I'm gonna loosen that back one just a little bit more just rotate the 
screw if it's loose enough. Make sure you're not rolling the lip in this front one here. See that? Definitely don't want that. Sometimes you can get this clip kind of out of the way. You want to be able to move it back and forth. That'll help reset that. The lip as well for this front area. Just trying to get the clamp kind of back in position. There we go. Okay. But now see how we have this big gap. It's actually open open air at the bottom here, so we gotta straighten this out. There's actually a notch on the top way up here if you can even see that definitely can't see it if I put the light in the way so this is the connection to the air box back here and if you look on the top right there see that little cutout well, the notch is at the 12 o'clock position back up here. So you need this cutout to go up here. That's your guide for where this back boot should be. And then get the carburetor all squared away after you've gotten that. Okay, it's basically in position. There's actually a notch on this front one as well. That this... There's like a little button on this front right here, right where the choke is. See that right there? That fits into the notch up front, so that's, again, helping you get it lined up. Make sure it's nice and even around the back here. It's basically an even gap right here. It does take some finagling, um, so don't rush it and get it right in the right spot. So now let's go ahead and finish up the connections, and then we'll snug it up with the um, clips. So to get the throttle slide back in, you want the notch, this notch right here, goes on a pin on the, if you're looking at it from the front this way, if this is 12 o'clock up here at the front, this would be 3 o'clock. So you want that, um, you want that notch, that's the main thing. Get the slide in there. And wiggle it back and forth until it finds that notch. Now make sure it seats all the way. Because I actually had it. See how it's up a little bit here? See how it's raised above the rim there? Um, actually, it wasn't seated one time, so it was basically like straight air going in. There was no, no feel at all. Um, that did happen one time. Sometimes you gotta take it out and try again. It's kind of tricky. Sometimes you kind of get it in the right spot and then you have to push it down too, like a screwdriver. Oh yeah, it's all twisted up. Come on. Okay, so let's get it kind of. Right position. 
Ooh, that'll keep some of their rotate. There we go. Get the cap back on. Okay, put the fuel line back on, slide the little circle clip back down. Okay, so now let's get it back up in its, in its position there. I'm not going to tighten the C-clamps yet, but I want them to be at least fairly close to where they need to be. Okay, so we need to bleed. Auto loop, vacuum hoses, overflow hoses down here, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Okay, now we gotta do this. Okay, so first we're gonna yank the auto loop cover off. Need to clean it, it's real dirty. Okay, so here's your auto lube system. This is your bleeder screw right here. So you take your JIS medium, that's the JIS large to get the cover off. And then we're actually gonna start it. That'll start it going. Um, and by the way, your indexing mark, you want this thing to point to the little indentation right there. That's where it should be. Um, and then you can adjust it for more or less oil, depending on what you need. When I first got it going again, I did a little bit more oil than normal, um, just to make sure everything was running good, but now I have it at factory setting. So let's start it and bleed it. Totally cold, I have no idea. Yeah, let's go ahead and do the C-clamps first, actually. Okay, so before we start it, let's snug down our C-clamps because we don't want any air leaking. It's not gonna run the way it should. It might run, but it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be right. And you may just get lucky with a good seal, but really how we should do it and I'm actually gonna top off the oil tank too just to make sure we got plenty and then when you finally snug these down you want to make sure that you have the screws pointed in a good direction for being able to get it off for next time. And this you'll see I'm going to tighten almost all the way down. This back one's probably going to be pretty close too.
too tight. You want to make sure it's in the right spot. seat. I'm going to keep the screw angled up as much as possible to try to make it so next time we don't actually have to take the rear, rear bolts of the oil tank off. That should be good. Let's go ahead and get this guy in a position here. This is just a vent hose up on top here, so it kind of gets pulled down when you take the oil tank off. So some oil in here. I need some oil pretty soon. You don't want to go crazy full because um, it'll just leak out the top and you don't want it to. You don't need a ton and just a little bit last year for quite a while. So. Okay. Oops. That's interesting. They call it motor oil and not 2T oil or two stroke oil on the cap there. It's kind of odd, but okay. Okay, when I kick this over, you'll be able to see it working. Press on, choke on, key on, kill switch off. So can you even still see? Second kick, that's what I'm talking about. Now watch as I operate the throttle cable. That manually gives it more, but watch that worm gear going. See it pumping. Then we take the, uh, the line right here. So we see it right here. Hmm. 
it's not much. how different it runs with the oil. Way less poppy. Forgot you have to take the bleeder screw all the way out. 